I have right at 930. You're able to connect, Barbara. It says it's still your it says you're still connecting and so weird. I don't see anybody else on here. Well, I'm recording this and I'm going to get started for everybody. I scared everybody last week. We went over. Good morning. It is May 11th, Monday, of course, because it's motivational time. So um, quote for the day, if it's worth remembering, or it is worth remembering, the time of greatest gain in terms of wisdom and inner strength is often that of greatest difficulty. So I hope that everybody is um, mentally working on a repair or progress or coming out of your cocoon after the past, gosh, almost two months of um, weirdness that we've been in. And I'll just leave it at that because we're going to talk about real estate today. So as the world starts to open up just about everywhere in the country, um, what will you do this week to create new business? So here's some things I want you to think about if you've been out of practice for a while is how many people will you commit to reaching out to this week? How many contacts will you commit to um, making daily? Who will you reach out to? Um, as a real estate coach, that's always seems to be the number one question. Well, who do I call? I don't know anybody. You know a bunch of people. So who are you going to reach out to? So um, let's start right there. And I've got some ideas on the next page, but some ideas obviously is past customers. Call to check on them. How about people that were in your pipeline before we were put on stay-at-home orders? Maybe you want to reach out to see how they're doing. Um, are, they, are they able to go back to work? Did they lose their jobs? What's going on in their life? Maybe see if they are still viable prospects and you can reconnect with them, get them requalified because some of the um, guidelines and parameters have changed in the past month as far as mortgage qualifications. Uh, maybe you just wanna reach out to um, people that you haven't thought of in a while. Maybe they're just crossing your brain and they're on your mind. That means you need to reach out to them. Um, obviously just your sphere. Maybe you just wanna reach out to 10 friends a day. So who, number one, who? Identify who your prospects are for the week. Then the second hardest question that, um, or most frequent question I should say, is what are you going to say to start say to start the conversation? And we'll go through that as well in a minute. Um, what are you going to say to start the conversation with the people as you make these calls? And I don't care, frankly. It's um, 2020. When I say making contacts, I don't care if that's phone call, which is obviously the best. However, if they are back at work or if they're homeschooling, they can't answer their phone. So a con a real estate contact. The definition is a two-way conversation about real estate. So I'm gonna loosen those parameters up a little bit and say, you don't necessarily wanna just throw out there and you know, with everything we've had going on and, and I'm jumping into a real estate conversation, we'll talk about that in a minute, but identify obviously who are you going to call, how are you gonna start the conversation and the next few slides will um, help us out with that as well. But one thing for those of you that have been around a while, if you'll remember the acronym FORD, and that doesn't mean fixed or repaired daily in regards to the automobile manufacturer. In our world, in real estate, that means that's the acronym for helping you remember how to start a conversation. F is family. O is occupation. Ask them how their job's going, if that's appropriate these days. Um, unemployment rate right now is 14.7%. Um, recreation, what have they been doing? Have they been getting out and riding their bikes? Have they been you know, playing more? Um, cornhole in the yard with their kids. What have they been doing um, during this downtime to get out and, and, and um, enjoy family time? So recreation and then dreams. Are they at the point now where again, as things are opening up, are they able to maybe reschedule that family vacation or, um, or kind of think about something they want to do? So FORD is the acronym to help you start the conversation. It's not about real estate. Remember, we ask about them. Good morning, everybody. So the other thing, it's Monday. Hopefully you guys have, like little Christine has, a, and I don't care if it's written or if you use an electronic calendar or your CRM, but you need to have a daily plan. It's Monday. It is mm -hmm. 9.30 on Monday. Do you have your plan? You gotta mute you guys. 
Um, do you have a social media plan? Because whether we like it or not, and there's a whole lot of crazy on social media, we know, but social media, we have got to be relevant on social media, being in real estate, because we are in a public business, public facing. We've got to interact with people that we don't know, collect new people, bring them into our world to let them know that we are able to help them with real estate or their friends. So whether you like it or not, you're gonna to have to embrace social media. So it is way past time to include social media as part of your daily prospecting activities. So um, I'm gonna, I want this to be interactive. We had a great session last week, guys. So the handful of you on here, we've got a small group, so don't be shy. But yeah. before we so move the on- So the goal for me, the goal, the goal that wants- Before we move on to the next screen, um, who, has any ideas on on who you're going to call this week what you're going to say and do you have some ideas on on specific posts you're going to put on social media anyone all right well i'll give you some some freebies ready we'll keep it simple no one's speaking up today nobody's had their coffee yet i got i'm on my second or third cup who to call let's keep it simple people what about, you know, Facebook gives you the birthdays for yeah. the day, for the week, past few days that you missed. So um, why don't you send them, and I don't mean just put on their wall so that you get lost in the 300 messages they got, and then they send a blanket message tomorrow. Oh, thank you so much for my birthday wishes. I'm so grateful for everybody that thought of me. Let's not do that. So um, what I do, honestly, a couple of things is um, people that I know really well, and particularly if they're realtors or real life friends. Hello people, we get their addresses from either um, the public tax record, they own a house, or if they're a realtor, we know that we can get their license has to be registered to their legal address. So if it's a realtor friend, feel free to send them a card too if you'd like, or perhaps a mortgage person since you're trying to prospect. But the point is, if it's somebody that, um, that you know, you're gonna have their address some way, somehow, or you can freaking ask for it. Ask for an address. Nobody's ever denied me. Well, what do you need that for? People love getting cards in the mail. I got one this weekend. Oh my gosh, I should have shown it to you guys. A friend of mine, um, I'm not, we've been friends for years. She used to be a new home sales rep. Um, she's had a lot of health problems through the years. And anyway, she's been staying at home and she's very crafty and literally um, creates cards for Hallmark and sells other stuff. Point is, so we keep in touch by Facebook and we send each other um, cards through the mail, honestly. And I got one just out of the blue from her over the weekend, the cutest little handwritten card on construction paper. And she had crafted, um, like made a flower out of, it looked like a pop-up flower, wrote in magic marker, this, this, the sweetest little note about how I'm always inspiring and encouraging. And again, I'm a longtime friend, so she can say those schmoozy things and um, that she loved and missed me, but she had also put in there um, this charm on a necklace that was faith over fear. She said, I can, you know, wear it as a necklace. I can put it, hang it on my rear view mirror in my car as a reminder, or I can just keep it in my trinket box. But I mean, totally unexpected. So um, on that note, if you're gonna send out birthday cards, handwritten cards, which I recommend because nobody gets those anymore, um, is the dollar store, and sometimes the um, Dollar General has them two for a dollar, not just a dollar, two for a dollar, 50 cents each people. And I go buy stacks of them at a time and I've got a little box right behind us that I keep them in um, with different messages so that the card is really, um, you know, geared towards that person. If it's just a past customer, they're very generic. If it's more of a friend, they're sweeter, of course. So at the dollar store over the weekend, I found a bunch of seed packets for flowers and, and veggies. Um, for four dollar, my friends, and I checked the expiration date, and they're good through December. So I'm putting those in packages this month. Um, who doesn't want to plant some fresh flowers, right? Or sometimes, if you know that they are like they like their organic food, or they're you know they grow their home garden or their herbs, there's tons of those as well. So slip in a 25 cent seed packet and that 50 cent card with your 50 or 55 cent stamp, whatever it is, and boom, you have sent out a little pop by without spending money on gas for a dollar 25. And it doesn't matter if they get your birthday card uh, three or four days after their birthday, who cares? Blame it on the postal system, <laughs> right? I mean, who cares? It doesn't matter. I mean, mail doesn't get there on time. 
So you can do the same thing with um, the anniversaries when, you know, everybody's celebrating their anniversaries, my wonderful wife of 20 years, blah, 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 blah. So um, if you know their address, again, if you don't, you can ask for it by messenger. They're, they're, I'm telling you, they're going to give you their physical address if you don't want to scope it out through the public tax records or if you're not sure if they rent. Um, obviously, um, I saw a couple people had babies yesterday on Mother's Day. How cool is that? So, and of course, you should be tracking, my friends, the home anniversary date of your past customers. So, um, in, in my Google Calendar, it tells me, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Smith bought their house on April 20th. So, it doesn't matter what year. And again, ideally, those you probably want to get out ahead of time. So, if you've got them in maybe Mondays, those are the days that you mail them for the whole week for the home anniversaries of your past customers. Again, with those little seed packets. New puppies, you know, everybody's bringing home new little fur babies during the, um, while we're still kind of at home more than we used to be. And oh my gosh, I saw yesterday a couple people actually have new jobs starting. So that's, you know, that's awesome. So I'm just giving, these are just some ideas um, to, and this has nothing to do with real estate. You guys see that, right? So here's the other thing people ask, should I put my business card in those birthday cards or those anniversary cards or those new puppy cards? The answer is no. So why don't you just make little um, return address labels with your name and your company name and ideally your personal address because the office doesn't want to receive all of our return mail, got it? So it doesn't matter. They're gonna, you know, Christine Williams, Florida Homes Realty Mortgage and my address because this is where my mailing address is anyway and this is where I work. So, um, and then when you're making the calls, and by the way, you can do this, you can just call if you want to follow up with the card. So that's the point of the calls. Ask them, you know, congratulate them on something happy in their life. That's a great way to call somebody. Hey, just saw on Facebook that you got a new puppy. He's so cute. What's his name? How old is he? La 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 la. Right? And then, of course, the new job one. That's easy. Oh my gosh, congratulations on the new job. You know, that's, um, that's incredible. I'm so happy for you. You know, it looks like your 2020 is getting a restart, whatever. So here's the deal. If you're doing this by phone call, what you need to do is, is there anything that you need from me right now? Nope, can't think of anything because they're like, huh? So then you go, well, is everything functioning okay in your house? You know, um, do you need a carpet cleaner? Do you need the gutters cleaned? Um, do you need the tree, the tree limbs trimmed? Just, you know, remember that I, I'm a resource for you for any repair, home repair vendors. Do you need any, any recommendations right now? So you're offering something of value and come on guys, it doesn't cost you anything, right? So um, you guys are all muted and I appreciate that. Any other, um, does, is this helping trigger any other questions or any other things that you can offer in a phone call where you're not begging for business and you're offering something to them? I hope you're taking notes. I am recording this if you want to replay it. I'll replay it again in my um, Boundless Coaching Facebook business page later today. Let's move on then. I'll keep it shorter than last week. What to say. So after you have the chat with them um, and you've had that, we put that on there twice, ha. Huh? So tell them, and they may not, maybe everything's fine in their home and that's awesome. You really don't want problems, especially if it's a past customer. So let them know that when, when you get off the phone call, you're going to email them some information to get their home ready for hurricane season. Guys, I'm not trying to be a Debbie Downer, but it is May 11th and um, hurricane season is around the corner June 1st. So, and in the meantime, between COVID and hurricane season, I guess we got murder hornets. If you guys haven't Googled that, that's the latest rage for um, the challenges for the US in the month of May, whatever, just the latest distraction. But in any event, um, now's the time, you know, we're going to see all the, um, all the news commercials and all the, the gloom and doom and all the name, you know, is we're going to have a rough year this year and, and all this coming up in a couple of weeks, I'm sure. So get ahead of the game and go ahead and send them, um, a list of supplies, remind them to go ahead and get their batteries, um, and, and the water because, oh my God, you know, we're already at a, um, for some reason we're having a supply issue in the US. I don't know why there's no food shortage, there's no toilet paper shortage, but we're not going down there. Point is, um, have them start stocking up now in the event that we have a storm or two this year. So get them that list and obviously you wanna brand it. So make it an um, publisher or Word document or something on your computer, a publisher, whatever hex system you use, 
and brand it so that your contact information is on that sheet. And again, if, you're, uh, if you email it, then they do it as a PDF so they can print it out and put it on the fridge and suggest that. Say, hey, print this out for your fridge as a reminder. Um, and also, as um, real estate experts, we need to remind them to check their homeowner's insurance policy, particularly if they've been there for a while and they have equity. They want to make sure that they have adequate um, insurance. Um, sometimes insurance uh, companies, you know, the agents will go and um, they have their little prospect list and they'll go and remind people every year or two to, you know, review their coverage. Um, but why don't you be the expert and do that as well? Because if they have equity in the home, um, their policy may need to be updated, frankly, with more coverage. And obviously, you want to recommend to them whether they need it, or, need it or not to get flood insurance because we know every time there's a freaking storm, and somebody wants to make a um, hurricane claim, even if the roof, uh, even if the tree falls through the roof, somehow that's rising waters, right? So just let them know, you know, it sounds ridiculous, but you know, that's the way insurance is. And so even if they don't need it, particularly if they don't need it, it's a lot cheaper. But just, you know, recommend that they consider flood insurance and by all means, pull out that homeowner's insurance policy, the deck page. Um, hopefully you know how to um, interpret that and maybe you can go over that with them um, on a Zoom call and help them go over it. And of course, don't give them insurance advice if you're not licensed, but you can go through some general information and then of course refer them to an insurance agent to get it updated. So anything else you can think of to help have some meaningful conversations this week? Moving on. So um, some of you attended my class last week, successfully selling new construction. So you saw the screen if you were paying attention. Um, the builders are doing a lot of um, incentives right now. Normally they don't have to, but you know, it's been kind of a strange world and they're doing mostly virtual appointments or you can go to the model home by appointment only. So I get all the emails from all the builders. I got several already this morning. So here's a couple from last week. Um, What's this, DR, is this DR, yep, DR Horton is offering through the end of the month $2,500 towards options or upgrades for, not us, for the, the frontline folks, healthcare, military, firefighters, educators. So on their, um, their inventory homes. So you don't post this on your Facebook page, guys. You say, hey, um, are you a firefighter? Are you a policeman? Are you a teacher? Uh, are you looking for a new home? I know a way to help you get um, a $2,500 incentive. Call me, right? Have them call you. Don't go to DR Horton. You post this and why would they call you? The numbers are right there. Don't do it. It's all about you. Same thing with artisan homes. They're a local builder. They're giving away a freaking $10,000 bonus on top of your commission. 10,000, not one. And um, they're giving away another $10,000 to the buyer if they'll, towards closing costs and prepaids, um, specifically for their two communities in Marshview and Harborview. So why in the world would you not wanna somehow promote this on social media this week, right? So again, obviously you don't mention the builder and you don't mention the communities. You tell them to call you to get more information, make the phone ring, that's the point of social media. And I've been um, preaching this for a few weeks now, we pay, big fat dues to our local, state, and national associations, right? So use them. There's tons of resources. Um, we get a lot of discounts, um, car rentals and health insurance. I saw something for pet insurance on there yesterday. So anyway, NAR, National Association of Realtors, um, recreated or relaunched their Right Here, Right Now campaign. They did that, I think it was during the recession was last. I was reading my Realtor magazine this weekend. But if you Google right here, right now, you'll probably get straight to the website or realtor.org, of course, is our NAR website. Hopefully you have a profile on there. Log in, go to the right here, right now tab. And until the end of the month, there are still some courses, certification courses that are free. I've already taken my ePro certification um, last month. It's a 12 hour CE course. And then if you want the actual, um, that's the course was free if you want to actually say that you're certified so that you can brand yourself and use those initials behind your name there is a fee for that and it's half price so i think it was 75 bucks or something and then the psa is the pricing um 
strategies advisor. So it's about um, CMAs and pricing for your seller. And I think it's four hours. I've um, registered for it, but I haven't completed it. Actually, I haven't started it, but I think it's four hours or six hours. So the course is free. And again, if you want the actual certification to use those initials behind your name when you're done and you passed, then there'll be a fee for the application to use the, to use the little um, badge that you have it. There's also some free webinars on there as well. And then while we're talking about education, um, license renewals, you know, originally it was March 31st, then they postponed it to April 30th, and then they postponed it again to, um, now it's June. So, I'm sorry, no, it's May or June. I think it's June. I have to double check, gosh, now that I say that. But the um, point is, is you, if you, for some reason, still haven't renewed your license that was originally due in March, you legally still have time. It's on DBPR, and if you want, if you have it, let me know, and I'll, I'll look it up for you as a, an instructor. Um, if you need any uh, CEs or ever, or your post-licensing, or you want to take the broker's course or what have you, I do own a real estate school. All of the um, FREC courses are online. It is self-study. So anyway, there's the website for that if you want that. Um, as we start to wrap up, some business tips. Um, anybody familiar with Realtor Property Resource? It is also through our um, NAR membership, our national membership. RPR, I think it's NARRPR.com. Um, you can also get it um, through the Jacksonville, NEFAR, through the MLS system, Flex MLS. There's a tab in there that you can access it. Um, but it's a, um, it, it's a national database, so it's really good for helping you do CMAs. And they have reverse prospecting and all kinds of tools. So if you've never gone in there, that's your challenge for the week is to get familiar with RPR. Social media tips, your goal, everybody here on this video or who will watch it later, is to post one video on social media this week. Um, you've got to get out of your own shell and do this. So what do you post? You can post anything. Go to the beach, post yourself live on the beach. It's a beautiful day today. However, if you want to make it um, real estate relevant, um, talk about market statistics. Something came through my Facebook last night that um, showings are back up to like normal range as of this past week. Um, and then the actual um, Jacksonville, Northeast Florida market stats report, it's about 50 some pages, should be released this week. So that's always a great reason to make a quick little video. Virtual tours, talk about how you're doing tours and listing appointments if people still want to do it virtually, that you can do it by, you know, FaceTime or Zoom or um, Google has a platform these days you can use. Why don't you interview a small business? You know, salons opened up today, hair salons, nail salons, all that jazz. If you get an appointment this week, it, why don't you check in live or maybe interview the owner if it's a small business owner. And, um, and the trick to that is, of course, post it through your business page. And then as long as the video is at least three minutes long, you can reshare it to your personal page where you probably have more people. So you can also create a video um, giving tips on how to prepare the home to get it ready for the market. I know a lot of people put things on hold, but it's still basically springtime. So it's, you know, we're at the beginning of May. Now people are, are gonna, you know, release and put it back. Anything else you can think of as far as a reason to post a video on social media? If you've never done one, that's your goal this week, do one. And then just to let everybody know, I'm doing a free class this Wednesday in a couple of days um, at 10 o'clock. Um, here's the link right here. It's also gonna be, I think it's already on back agent. I'm calling it the Virtual Vision Board 2020. Um, I've never done a vision board. I knew that was the rage you know, earlier this year. People cut out pictures from magazines like a craft class and posted the vacations they were taking motivational words, you know, numbers that are their goals and all that. We're not doing that because it's going to be by Zoom, but it's truly going to be um, a revamp. So my caption down here is ready to have a virtual bonfire ripping up that January board, whether it was in your head or on a spreadsheet. Um, and get ready. Let's review the goals that you had for 2020. So, so this is supposed to be a round table. Everybody's going to have different goals, but um, at the very least, tune in and participate and so that'll give you ideas to revamp. 
I'm sure that we all have to take a look at the past um, four to five months because we're halfway into May and see where we wanted to be by now and where we really are. And then what can we do to maybe make up for some of that loss or if it's too late to do that, what can we do moving forward this week forward to at least make the type of income that we need for the rest of the year. So it is um, a colorful way to say we're gonna do a little um, business planning. So I'd love for you all to join. Again, it's free, but um, that's what I've got for that. And as we wrap up, because I promised last week that I wouldn't go over this week, um, any successes that we can celebrate today? Anything good happened over the past week? Anyone? Anyone? Well, then I'll share, and hopefully they'll give you an idea for next week. I, yesterday, got a random text. Um, a guy said, hi, I'm so-and-so. Um, Mike said that you helped him last year and I'm ready to buy a house. Whoop. So I called him right away yesterday and sure enough, it is a referral. Um, he is the coworker of somebody I sold a house to last May, exactly a year ago. So um, talked to him, figured out what he and his fiance are looking for, um, found out where he banks. Um, he knows a little bit about the process. I went ahead and connected him with lenders yesterday via email. So his goal today is to get, of course, pre-qualified so that hopefully we can go out to look at homes one evening this week or this weekend. So I got a new lead um, from a referral. That's exactly what we want. Um, and again, just as we wrap things up, oh, I got a hand raised. Let me see if I can get to it. Let's see what's going can you, on. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Go ahead. Well, I gave a few free masks out um, at the UPS store. Someone asked me and I had oh. a few. So I, go, I went ahead and gave one. He said, do you have another one? I said, sure, why not? Gave it to him, ran into him yesterday. He said, this is the lady who gave me the mask. He was with his brother. I gave him my business cards. You never know, I said. And he said, well, we're looking for a condo. Perfect. So he said, can you buy another Ab condo? I said, sure, you can buy as many as you want. <laughs> Absolutely, and that's what it's all about, guys. They're, in my opinion, and I've been doing this 24 years, we don't have to pay for leads. That's ridiculous because um, you're paying those zip codes and you know that you're sharing with other realtors anyway. So you're paying gobs of money, hundreds, thousands of dollars a month to um, try to get strangers to work with you. Well, we're doing that all day for free anyway, right? So why don't we focus on social media where we have an audience already and it's free? Videos, just being on there. The, my, the, the most traction I get on my posts have nothing to do with real estate. I very rarely do. I did post, I got a referral yesterday. And, and uh, what people want to see is pictures, videos, and those colorful little backgrounds with a couple of little sentences. Nobody wants to see how many closings you've had. I am so sick of the handful of realtors that do that every freaking day. And I'm just, the person's not, there's one in particular, and she's my friend, so I'm not trying to be ugly. She's not with our company. Every single day she brags about, she just got another one under contract. She just got them the best deal. They just won the competing offers. I'm like, for the love of God, it's obnoxious. So, and sure enough, there's people on there. Oh my God, you're selling one a day. You're awesome. So perception is reality. However, I went in MLS and any of us can do this. And I went to look at her closings for the year, honey, it's like 1.3 million. So that's good considering we've been on lockdown, but that is nothing like looking like you're selling literally closing a home a day so people don't want to see that i'm also noticing most of her posts like that are getting four and five likes i'm putting stupid stuff out there like um oh my gosh i got a um referral i love referrals freaking got like 30 people liking that already less than 24 hours so and that lets people know you're active um and yeah go ahead yeah i i have another one i, sure. I my, TV, my tv broke uh, about three weeks ago, and I thought, oh my goodness, well, I don't really watch TV much, but I like to watch YouTube on it. So I went ahead and purchased on a sale on the TV. Gentleman came over, and I thought, oh, okay, I thought it would be easy to put together. It was not. So he came back, and I asked him if he would help me put it together and so forth. And it was a smart TV. I had an old TV. Okay. And I asked him some questions and so forth and on. Anyway, he's coming over today, and we're going to do a live video about uh just about technology most we're going to do in three parts most people have no idea how to use 
you know, how to even set up a Facebook. You know, I'm talking about the older generation, the people who are over 40 who were not born with any technology at their fingertips, so the basics. And then we'll go to the second section, which is what are the statistics? How many people are using Facebook or social media? And what's the best way to learn it? And just giving some information about Perfect. That. Perfect. It's really about helping people in need. Because they, people, everyone needs something. We all need, they need something. The more that we can reach out and think about other people and how we can help them, then they're going to depend on more. Us. Absolutely. And just by being relevant and being a resource for anything, smart TV, social media, um, homeowners insurance, whatever it is, then they're still going to, they're going to start to follow us more on social media and they're going to decide they like us, that we're an honest person, we're a helpful person. And those are the people that we want to work with anyway. And they're going to reach out to us when they're ready. Absolutely. Well, I'm going to wrap things up because we've done good on time today. And, um, I'm also, you guys know I do have a coaching program. I have availability for a couple of individuals. I'm also going to be looking at doing a group coaching, which is, you know, you're not going to get as much um, interaction in that. But um, anyway, a couple options there. But uh, I'm glad you guys joined me again this Monday. We have a little smaller crowd, but that's okay. We can raise out at the beach. And um, I'll see you all again next Monday at 930. So I hope you all have a good week. Bye.